Hello all, welcome back to Data Science Brain. In this video, we are going to see some of the most asked data science interview questions with its answers. Make sure to watch the video right till the end. So let's get started. Question number one. What is the curse of dimensionality and how does it affect machine learning models? The curse of dimensionality refers to the issue that arises when dealing with high dimensional data. As the number of features or dimensions increase, the number of data required to generalize accurately grows exponentially. This can lead to sparsity in the data, increased computational complexity and overfitting in machine learning models. Question number 2. What is the difference between precision and recall? How do you decide which metric to optimize for a given problem? Precision is the ratio of correctly predicted positive observations to the total predicted positives. It measures accuracy of positive predictions. On the other hand, recall is the ratio of correctly predicted positive observations to all the observations in the actual class. It measures the ability of the model to capture all the relevant classes, I mean all the relevant cases. The choice between precision and recall depends on the problem. In scenarios where false positives are costly, precision is prioritized. In situation where false negatives are costly, recall is on focus. For example, maybe you are classifying a tumor as malignant or not. Now in that case, false positives and also false negatives are really costly. If the tumor isn't rightly classified, if the patient actually had the tumor and still the model has classified it as negative, that is false negative. Now if the patient didn't have tumor and the model has classified it as positive, that means the model says that he has tumor, then that is false positive. Now this is also costly because the patient has to get treatment even when he didn't have tumor. So these two are examples of costly false positive or false negative uh, classifications. So according to the according to the situation, if the false positive is costly, then you know you should be using precision. In scenarios where false negatives are costly, recall is on the focus. So that's the example. Next question is what is cross validation and why is it important in machine learning? Cross validation is a technique used to assess the performance of a machine learning model by training and evaluating it on multiple subsets of dataset. The most common form is k-fold cross-validation, where the data is divided into k subsets and the model is trained k times, each time using a different subset for evaluation and the remaining data for training. It helps in obtaining a more robust estimate of the model's performance and reduces the risk of overfitting. Question number 4. Explain the concept of regularization in linear regression. How does it prevent overfitting? Regularization is a technique used to prevent overfitting in linear regression models by adding a penalty term to the cost function. The two common types of regularization are the L1 regularization also known as lasso regularization or L2 regularization also known as Ritz regularization. These penalty terms discourage the model from fitting the training data too closely and help generalize better to new unseen data. Now, question number 5. What is the difference between bagging and boosting in ensemble learning? Provide examples of algorithms for each. Bagging or bootstrap aggregating involves training multiple instances of the same learning algorithm on different subsets of the training data typically sampled with a replacement. Random forest is an example of a bagging algorithm. Now boosting focuses on training multiple weak learners sequentially, with each learner correcting the errors of its predecessor. Adapt-Boost and Gradient Boosting machines are examples of boosting algorithms. Question number 6. Explain the concept of future engineering. Provide examples of future engineering techniques. Future engineering involves creating new features or transforming existing ones to improve the performance of a machine learning model. Examples include one-hot encoding, converting categorical variables into binary vectors. Future scaling, scaling numerical features to standard range. Polynomial features, introducing interactions between features by creating polynomial terms. Question number 7. What is the difference between overfitting and underfitting in machine learning? How can you address these issues? Overfitting occurs when a model learns the training data too well, capturing noise and outliers, 
leading to poor generalization on new data. Underfitting happens when a model is too simple to capture the underlying patterns in the data, resulting in poor performance on both training and new data. Addressing overfitting can be done by using techniques like regularization, cross validation and reduce model complexity. Addressing underfitting can be done by increasing the model complexity, adding more and relevant features or use more advanced algorithms that can reduce underfitting. Now question number 8. What is the curse of imbalanced classes and how can you handle it in machine learning? Imbalanced classes occurs when one class in the target variable has significantly fewer instances than the others, leading to biased models. Now how can we handling imbalanced classes? Techniques include resampling, which is oversampling minority or undersampling majority classes, using different evaluation metrics like precision recall or F1 score, and employing algorithms designed to handle imbalanced data, example SMOT for oversampling, which is synthetic minority oversampling technique. Question number 9. Explain the concept of the bias variance trade off. How does it impact model performance and how can you strike a balance? Bias refers to the error introduced by approximating a real world problem too simplistically. High bias can lead to underfitting. Variance is the model's sensitivity to small fluctuations in the training data. High variance can lead to overfitting. The bias variance trade off suggests that a balance between simplicity and complexity should be maintained. A model with too much complexity may fit the training data closely too well, but it might not generalize well to new data. Finding the right level of complexity involves tuning model parameters and selecting an appropriate algorithm. Question number 10 is a simple question, but it is still relevant in the field of data science. Explain the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Provide examples for each. In supervised learning, the algorithm is trained on a labeled dataset, where the input data is paired with corresponding output labels. The goal here is to learn a mapping function from input to outputs. Examples are predicting house price based on features like square footage, number of bedrooms, etc. It's a prediction task. Unsupervised learning deals with unlabeled data and algorithms aims to find hidden patterns or structures in the data. Examples include clustering algorithms used for clustering customer data to identify distinct marketing segments. Now that concludes our video of the 10 most asked data science interview questions with answers. I hope you have enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you need explanation on any of the topics mentioned in this video, please comment it down on the comments section. If you think this video is useful, kindly put a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video with your friends. I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding.